NASA is building a camp. China and Russia? They're laying bricks. But SpaceX? SpaceX is flipping rockets into moon bases. Literally. While others are dragging prefab modules or melting lunar dust into bricks, Elon Musk has a wild idea. Why build a house on the moon when your rocket can be the house? This is Moonbase Alpha. SpaceX's plan to turn deep space living into something fast, scalable, and frankly, way cooler. No construction crew, no waiting years. Just land it, tip it, retrofit it, and boom, home. In today's tech map video, we're diving into why SpaceX's Moonbase Alpha might just leave NASA and China in the lunar dust and how it's redefining what it means to live on another world. We all know SpaceX is ramping up its cutting-edge technology to help NASA make a return to the moon a reality. NASA's ambitious international project, the Lunar Gateway, has been making headlines for good reason. This will be the first space station orbiting the moon and is a cornerstone of the Artemis missions. It's not just about getting astronauts back on the moon, it's about laying the groundwork for future crewed missions to Mars. The Gateway will serve as a deep space home for astronauts, giving them a place to conduct science and prepare for missions down to the lunar surface. To ensure everything's ready for Artemis IV, the first crewed mission to Gateway, NASA is aiming to launch two key components by December 2027, HALO, Habitation and Logistics Outpost and the power and propulsion element. Both modules will hitch a ride aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. Then in September 2028, under Artemis IV, SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System will transport astronauts from Gateway down to the lunar South Pole. It'll also play a vital role in delivering supplies for crewed missions. And even before that, Artemis III, planned for 2027, we'll see a Starship land astronauts on the moon. Clearly, SpaceX isn't just providing support, it's central to the mission's logistics. But let's be real, Elon Musk didn't build the world's most powerful rocket just to play a supporting role. Starship is meant to take center stage. And that brings us to the bigger picture of lunar exploration. While NASA's primary moon base, called Artemis Base Camp, is focused on fixed surface habitats prefabricated on Earth, and China is exploring 3D printing structures using lunar soil, Elon has a different idea. He sees Starship as a mobile lunar home. Simple, flexible, and innovative. Think about it. Instead of hauling huge modules or tons of building material to the moon, why not just use the transport vehicle itself as the habitat? It's practical and efficient. For these lunar missions, the Starship won't need wings or heat shields, since it's not coming back to Earth. These specialized versions will stay on or orbit around the Moon permanently. And they won't just be functional, they'll look good too, possibly painted white rather than left in raw stainless steel. Much like a submarine, Starship's internal structure will be transformed from a vertical layout to long horizontal decks extending from the nose to the tail. To achieve this transformation, several steps are necessary. After landing vertically on the moon, the starship will be physically tilted over into a horizontal position to serve as a habitat. Following this, the most complex phase begins, interior renovation, which can be assisted by robotics. Initially, starship was designed for short-term crew support, functioning like a mobile home. But to serve as a long-term trailer park on the moon, its interior will need a full makeover, converting it from a transport vehicle into a permanent living space. So what does a home really need? For starters, floors and walls to divide rooms. It also requires electrical wiring, ventilation, communication systems, lighting, heat management, plumbing with water tanks, bathrooms, showers, and furniture. The goal is to keep the layout simple but effective, maximizing both comfort and usability. Inside, Starship will likely follow an open concept design, with a single level floor running from front to back, roughly one third up the rocket's circumference. 
This configuration allows for storage and equipment under the floor and provides enough overhead space to reduce claustrophobia for the crew. The ship's length can then be divided into sections for various essential functions. Living quarters, dining areas, scientific laboratories, exercise zones, and maintenance workstations. Living quarters would focus on privacy, comfort, and rest for each astronaut. Sleeping areas could be modular pods or small rooms designed to reduce noise, control light, and maintain circadian rhythms despite the moon's unusual day-night cycles. Communal dining and social zones help support crew morale and mental health. These spaces would include kitchens or food prep areas, supply storage, water recycling systems, and areas for relaxation, games, or virtual communication with Earth. Dedicated science areas would support experiments, equipment maintenance, and physical exercise. Labs could be used for tasks like analyzing geological samples, conducting biology experiments, such as plant growth, and carrying out engineering work vital for operations on the moon. Exercise equipment is crucial to counter the effects of low gravity, such as muscle weakening and bone density loss. Workstations may also include robotics control areas for managing remote machinery used in construction and repairs, essential for keeping the habitat functional. Because the environment on the moon is so unique, specialized systems are required throughout the habitat to keep astronauts safe and comfortable. These include air circulation to keep oxygen moving, climate control systems to maintain appropriate temperature and humidity, water recycling systems to reuse water efficiently, and waste management systems to keep the habitat clean. The Starship base will be modular, allowing easy upgrades or reconfigurations as mission needs change. Its life support systems will operate in a closed loop, conserving essential resources like air and water to make the base more sustainable. Instead of traditional rocket fuel, this lunar starship will be powered by five large solar panels arranged in a hexagon, covering about 60 feet, 18 meters, in diameter. These panels will provide most of the energy required to operate the base. The design also puts a strong emphasis on astronaut mental health. Private quiet spaces, LED lighting that mimics natural daylight, and intuitive ergonomic designs all contribute to making life on the moon more manageable. Finally, once construction is finished, the Lunar Starship base will need protection from space hazards. While there's no wind or rain, the moon is bombarded by meteorites and cosmic radiation. The solution? A five-meter thick layer of lunar regolith covers the Starship, acting as a protective shield against both radiation and small impacts. To sum it up, SpaceX's Alpha Moon Base introduces a novel concept transforming the Starship landers themselves into fully functional habitats for living and working. The idea is simple yet groundbreaking. You bring almost everything you need from Earth inside the rocket and then use lunar soil to shield it once it's landed. This approach takes advantage of the vehicle's existing structure, upgraded with solar panels and interior modifications. It's fast, efficient, and practical. Despite its efficiency, other space agencies have opted for different strategies. They favor designs that aren't limited by the requirements of launch or landing vehicles, and instead focus on custom-built surface habitats tailored specifically for life on the moon. China and Russia are collaborating on a major lunar research project called the International Lunar Research Station. The construction approach is highly advanced utilizing local lunar resources to build habitat structures. This includes cutting-edge 3D printing technology and machines that create bricks by melting and shaping lunar soil. These bricks, intended for protective outer layers and base infrastructure, have already undergone testing on Earth and in simulated space environments. By constructing much of the base using moon materials instead of importing everything from Earth, they significantly reduce both costs and payload weight. Much like SpaceX, China will employ robotic systems for support. Robots and autonomous machines will play a crucial role in constructing, maintaining, 
and expanding the base, particularly in coping with the moon's harsh conditions. The habitat design will feature a combination of rigid modules and inflatable softshell sections. These, along with the lunar soil bricks, will offer protection against radiation, extreme temperatures, and micrometeorite impacts. The base will include a network of connected modules built for long-term human use, such as living quarters, labs, and work areas. For life support, China plans to cultivate plants to produce food and recycle air and water using the proven Lunar Palace system. This Earth-tested setup is designed to model a self-sustaining life support environment suitable for long-duration lunar missions. The Lunar Palace system can even create a bioregenerative life support system. Recycling oxygen from plants, purifying water, and processing waste into nutrients to grow food. At the heart of NASA's Artemis Base Camp is the Foundation Surface Habitat, a purpose-engineered fixed module intended to serve as the astronauts' core living and lab space. The Foundation Habitat offers 127 cubic meters of habitable volume. While that's only about one-tenth of the International Space Station's volume, it's a significant space for a structure located in deep space. In fact, it's ten times larger than the Orion capsule, which transports astronauts to lunar orbit and even more spacious than the entire Gateway Space Station. Designed to accommodate up to four astronauts, the habitat supports stays ranging from several weeks to about two months. It's a multi-story facility, roughly three levels, that includes everything needed for extended lunar living. While the habitat remains stationary, astronauts will move around using specialized vehicles. These include the Lunar Terrain Vehicle, an unpressurized rover for short-distance travel around the base, and larger pressurized rovers designed for longer journeys lasting days or even weeks. These rovers are equipped with life support systems to keep astronauts safe during extended surface missions. Like SpaceX, NASA's base camp will rely on solar energy and may even add nuclear power sources for a continuous energy supply. Energy storage and management systems are essential to get through the lunar night, which can last about 14 Earth days. Whereas Starship uses a thick layer of lunar regolith and internal insulation for radiation and thermal protection. NASA's Artemis Base Camp features thick, purpose-built walls. The habitat may also incorporate underground or partially buried structures for additional shielding. One of the exciting aspects of the base camp is its scalability. It's designed to grow over time, starting with initial modules and gradually expanding. Thanks to its modular components, it's easy to add new labs, living spaces, or infrastructure as needed. 